in the previous lecture i think part two and part one i showed you some relationship that will allows you to to calculate or predict as a function of uh, your substrate concentration for pure system for i mean like for an enzymatic reaction that contains only your enzyme and i also showed three additional expressions when you encounter different type of inhibitors like a competitive inhibitor non-competitive inhibitor and another one is uncompetitive inhibitor so I'm just going to to write the Michaelis maintain expression one time here so this expression relates your initial velocity with your substrate concentration and Km is your equilibrium concentration and mu max is your maximum initial velocity. maximum initial velocity <clears throat> I also showed you how to calculate these parameters or how do you obtain these parameters so if I give you value of your initial velocity and your substrate concentration then how to get km and your mu max so I showed you the line weaver berg plot so all you need is to take the reciprocal of uh, this expression and then you can calculate the, the values from the slope and intercept so I showed you this one one by mu max so this is how you draw the line weaver bird plot one by mu one by your substrate concentration and then you will get some line like that and then if you want you can extend this line to to get where it cuts in the x-axis so this value will be equal to minus one by km and your slope will be equal to km by mu max and your intercept this value will be equal to 1 by mu max so this one will allow you to calculate your km from here and your mu max from the slope or if you know mu max you can also calculate your km value directly from the sorry mu max from your intercept and if you know mu max you can calculate km from this part no? from the slope so I already showed you I explained this one so I'm just uh, revising this one because you need to you must know how to use or how to make a line weaver birth plot and you should and you, you must know how to calculate these parameters so this is for a enzymatic reaction that involves just enzymes there are no inhibitors in your system I also showed you three different types of inhibitors competitive and competitive and non-competitive inhibitors I also showed you some expression that allows you to relate the initial velocity as a function of your substrate concentration so I'm just going to, to write again here for competitive inhibition this one is very tricky that's why I'm going to a bit slow mu max substrate concentration yes plus km alpha and for uncompetitive Be 
Asia inhibitors you will be equal to min max s alpha s plus k m and for non competitive mu will be equal to min max multiplied by your substrate concentration divided by alpha s plus alpha k m so if, if i ask you to to identify what type of inhibitors that we are going to that are uh, or what type of inhibitors is inside the reactor or it's, it's not it's very difficult to explain you know like or, uh, or how to say like uh, let's put it this way just imagine you you did some experiment using a bioreactor for particular enzyme and for particular substrate and then you recorded your initial velocity and your substrate concentration and just assume you get some data like that and for the moment just assume this curve is corresponds to pure enzyme so which means no inhibitors in the system and just assume you added an inhibitor purposely and then again you calculated your mu value and your substrate concentration and you plot them you get something like that say inhibitor one and then you do the same experiment and then this time you you add inhibitor two and then you now you record your you calculate the initial velocity and you calculate your, as a fun and then you plot against the substrate concentration and this time you get something like that say this is uh, inhibitor 2 so this one is inhibitor 1 so if I ask you to to calculate or I tell me so what type of inhibitor you you have in the system yeah? whether it's a competitive uncompetitive or non-competitive so if you are a very good experimentalist you can easily go to your lab and you can get the data you, you just monitor your product concentration time you get your slope value from that which is nothing but your initial velocity and you do the same experiment for different substrate concentration and then you can get a, a graph like this one yeah? so you can get some experimental data and then you can you can get get a nice plot relating your initial velocity with your substrate concentration but if you want to know what type of inhibitor you are going to deal with then you should do some engineering level calculations so using some of the expressions which i showed you here this one this one and this one so how to identify what type of inhibitors that we are going to deal so for that you need this line weaver bird plot so what you need to do is like you know what is line weaver bird plot which is a plot of one by your initial velocity one by your substrate concentration you get something like that slope you get some intercept and this value the point that cuts at your x-axis that will be equal to minus 1 by km intercept will be equal to 1 by mu max slope will be km by mu max so this is for pure pure system which means no inhibitors so, so just assume if you are if you are going to deal with some if how do you say like uh, if you have a competitive inhibitor inside your reactor and if you plot your line weaver bird plot say this one is one by mu one by substrate concentration say this is for your pure system and if you have an if you have a competitive inhibitor 
then let's change the color then when you plot one by mu versus one by substrate concentration you will get something like that medium scale So you will get something like that, you know. So this is in presence of inhibitor. Say this is say this is another inhibitor. In both if you look at this this line, the blue line, say line one on another blue line, line 2, and you see this one say, let's say line 0, which is red color, which means this is this red one corresponds to pure system, which means no inhibition. So this is what you are going to observe in a line weaver bird plot. If, you, if, you, if your inhibitor is a competitive inhibitor, So this is what you are going to see in the line weaver bar plot. So what you see in this graph is like one thing that you can immediately observe. Everything cuts at one particular inter point. So this is a this slope have a common intercept, and we all know this intercept is equal to one by mu max. So what it states is like if you have a competitive inhibitor. competitive inhibitor your mu max this is going to to remain same so mu max will not be altered will not be altered altered by by the presence of inhibitor so this inhibit but if you come here if you if you look at the intercept here yeah, these values sorry the values which cuts in the x-axis so these values are nothing but equal to 1 by km 1 by km and this one minus 1 by km so what it says is like if you have a competitive inhibitor your equilibrium concentration will change equilibrium concentration at which your mu reaches half of your mu max so which means k this is nothing but km value this will be altered if you have a competitive inhibitor so if you have a competitive inhibitor your mu max will remain same no matter how much inhibitor you add into the reactor but it will alter your km your equilibrium concentration or if you want you can call equilibrium constant Will change so this is one way to identify that you are going to deal with a competitive inhibitor yeah? so if I give you some data say like mu versus substrate concentration versus mu I say this one is pure this one in presence of an inhibitor and if I ask you to calculate like calculate the 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 equilibrium concentration and also your mu max for both of these cases and if i also ask you ask you what type of inhibitor so it, then you, you can easily for some reason my pen is not working and you, you can easily make a plot yeah? one by substrate concentration and then just check whether your line weaver bird plot show this particular type of trend which is like a common intercept but different km values so this is one condition yeah so so this is if you want you can call this as a graphical method but it, 
In fact, this theoretically it's called as a line weaver Berg plot method of identifying what type of inhibitors that you have in the system. Uh, if you want, you can generally call it as a graphical method. So I think this is enough to explain competitive inhibitor. And imagine if you perform some reaction, enzymatic reaction with pure enzymes without any inhibitor and you get some relationship like that or some experimental outcome like that you can express mu in grams per liter per minute substrate concentration grams per liter and this time you add an uncompetitive inhibitor yeah? so instead of competitive inhibitor this time you add an uncompetitive inhibitor and just assume you got some value like this so this is in presence of inhibitor so let's call inhibitor uc uc means uncompetitive inhibitor or if you want just call inhibitor one this time yeah so if you plot these values using the 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 linear expression one by mu is equal to km by mu max one by substrate concentration plus one by mu max so again you you convert this or you plot this data in the line we were back plot so one by mu one by substrate concentration so let's this will be for your pure pure system so no inhibitor but if you have an inhibitor if if you transfer this if you transpose this data according to this expression or Michael, uh, the linearest version of the michaelis mantan expression this time you will get something completely different yeah you will get a linear line so this is in presence of inhibitor one so if you look at this graph one thing you can realize is like you have a different intercept so what it states is like this will be equal to one by mu max this will be equal to one by mu max so what it means it's it means like when you have a competitive inhibitor, it's going to affect your mu max. So, in comp when we are going to when sorry, if you have an uncompetitive inhibitor, it's going to decrease decrease your mu max value. You know? And if you see here, you also it cuts at different x value. So here minus one by k m, and another one minus. 1 by km so what it states or <coughs> what you can interpret how you can interpret this graph it's like you have a different intercept so which mean you have a different mu max so if you have a uncompetitive inhibitor it's going to it's going to alter or, if, or theoretically it's going it's going to decrease decrease your mu max value the maximum initial velocity and it's also going to change or alter the equilibrium concentration which is km so these are the things you must remember <clears throat> what else we can say? And then we can go on to maybe uncompetitive inhibitor. Let's plot this in a separate graph. C 
say this is for your pure and this one is impure one impure are in presence of an inhibitor in particular uncompetitive inhibitor say the mu max value here for when you don't have an inhibitor in the system is mu max and once you added an inhibitor into the reactor and we just assume it decreased your mu max value by some amount say by a factor of alpha so mu max by alpha i already showed you before how do you how to get this km value so km value is nothing but concentration substrate concentration when your maximum velocity reaches exactly half of your maximum velocity sorry your your initial velocity reaches half of your maximum velocity so which means for the pure system just imagine if this is mu max so half of that mu max will be somewhere around here so this will be mu max by 2 so you draw a line here so this will be equal to km so this is for pure system so so km will be mu is equal to mu max into substrate concentration divided by km plus s value so when mu is equal to mu max by 2 mu max multiplied by your substrate concentration km plus your substrate concentration this one this one will get cancelled so km will be is equal to minus substrate that will be equal to your substrate concentration so this substrate concentration will be equal to km when your mu value is your initial velocity is equal to mu max by 2 so this is for pure pure system which means no inhibitors or no inhibition yeah, but if you are going to deal with an uncompetitive inhibitor which is here this line so we know mu max which is here so exactly half of the, let's draw in the next page sorry so exactly half of this value say you come here and then you draw a line Okay, my drawing is really not good anyway so if you if you take half of this value it will come exactly at the same km value okay let's calculate this one we know the 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 relationship that connects your initial velocity with your substrate concentration when you have an uncompetitive inhibitor inhibitor say mu is equal to mu max substrate and then divided by what's this one let's check one time alpha multiplied by your substrate concentration plus km so now your mu value will be exactly equal to half of this one so mu will be equal to mu max by alpha by 2 which is equal to mu max substrate concentration alpha s plus km so <coughs> so mu max and mu max get cancelled
Mm-hmm. So mu max by alpha. Let's do this is a bit tricky. Mu max by alpha using two. So this is nothing but mu max by two alpha. That's equal to mu max by s alpha s plus km. Mu max and mu max get cancelled. So two alpha s will be equal to alpha s plus km so km will be equal to 2 alpha s minus alpha multiplied by substrate concentration so km will be equal to alpha s so what it states uh, this mathematically this is a simple derivation so all we did is like we know the maximum value when you are going once you added a, an uncompetitive inhibitor and just assume once you added an uncompetitive inhibitor, your mu max decreased by some factor, say by factor of alpha. I just divided by some number alpha. So if that's the case, exactly half of this one will be equal to one by half of mu this alpha. So this is a half of your maximum maximum initial velocity when you have an uncompetitive inhibitor so this number so all I did is I, I substituted in this particular expression so you substitute that mu value here and then eventually you get km value which is km is equal to alpha s yes. so so what we can say based on this derivation is like if your mu m, which is your maximum initial velocity, decrease by a factor of alpha, then your km value will be altered by the same factor eh? same factor alvas your km value will be equal to alpha times your substrate concentration so that's the that's the theoretical interpretation that you can give but at, if you want you can plot this in a i already showed you the line weaver berg plot for uncompetitive inhibitor so you do the same one by mu one by substrate concentration this will be for your pure system and this will be for in presence of an un sorry this line will be same the slope will be same so this is in presence of inhibitor uncompetitive inhibitor yeah? And then from here you can get 1 by km minus 1 by km and here you can get minus 1 by km so you must know how to use a graph sheet if you don't if you don't want to use a graph sheet in the exam exam you can you can use Microsoft Excel it's completely fine for me but you should be able to calculate this km values it's it's a must And then so let's this one is very tricky you have to i will give you some problem try to try to solve it by yourself and try to calculate the maximum initial velocity the equilibrium concentration km and also <clears throat> try to identify what type of inhibitor you have in the system so so it will be a good practice for you so Try to do it. Maybe try to do it using a normal graph sheet and then also try to do the calculations using Microsoft Excel or any other software that you know where you can get this trend line 
that allows you to calculate your your slope and your intercept and also the line the trend line that cuts the point at which your trend line cuts the x-axis this one so from where you get your km values yeah? so so try to do it by yourself yeah? i will try to show probably in the next lecture i will try to solve one problem for you but you have to practice you have to practice in the home going to move on to non-competitive inhibition or just assume we're doing some enzymatic reaction enzyme you have substrate and this time you added a non-competitive inhibitor so how it's going to look like yeah? so just assume you have your mu your substrate concentration say this is for your pure system or, or just a pure enzyme which means no inhibitors and once you added a non-competitive inhibitor the relationship between of you, your initial velocity will decrease at all the substrate concentration and just assume it follows a trend like that so this is your mu max here this is your mu max altered by some amount alpha and again you can follow the same rule you take a half of that value and then you can come here come down that one will give you a km value and then again you take half of this value you cut come here you go to intercept that one will give you km value or if you plot, especially if you have a non-competitive inhibitor or any type of inhibitor, I suggest you just go go and plot your data in the line we were bird plot. So if you plot a 1 by mu versus 1 by substrate concentration in the line we were bird plot, say this is for your pure system, just you have only enzyme, no inhibitors in the system. So, but once you added a non-competitive inhibitor, I don't know where I kept my scale. Okay, let me try to draw. You will get something like that. So this is a non-competitive inhibitor. See another non-competitive inhibitor. So if you see this one, if if you look at this graph, one thing is clear, which is like your intercept is changing. So this intercept is nothing equal but equal to one by mu max. So which means if you have a non-competitive inhibitor in the system so it's going to decrease your maximum initial velocity so when you have a non-competitive inhibitor your mu max will decrease but if you look at this value here everything have a common intercept sorry common common uh, sorry all of these lines they cut at the same point in the x-axis so this is equal to minus 1 by km so so mu max will decrease but your equilibrium concentration km will remain constant So Km for, for pure, that will be equal to Km for impure or in presence of a non-competitive inhibitor. So, so just, just a simple plot will allow you to get some theoretical understanding on how the inhibitors act on the enzyme and 
eventually how they decrease the reaction rate you know? so so these are the things you should remember in enzyme inhibition kinetics you know? so mm, these are not these are not really difficult you know so whenever we talk about enzyme inhibition kinetics all you need to think is like we are going to add something that's going to occupy the space of the substrate in the enzyme. So enzymes have a lot of packets that can fit some substrate molecule. Eventually, enzymes will convert that substrate into products. But if you add an inhibitor, inhibitor will go and occupy those space. So which means it cannot uh, perform the job anymore. So, so you're practically you're blocking some space where the reaction happens. So that's the meaning, that's the, that's the purpose of an inhibitor, yeah? or that's the job of an inhibitor. That's the purpose of adding an inhibitor, sorry. So, and, and this inhibitor can decrease the enzymatic reaction by different mechanisms, and that mechanism depends on the type of inhibitor itself. So I, I, I explained the three different types of inhibitors, competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive so and they all follow some some rule which I explained based on this line weaver bird plot so if it's a non-competitive inhibitor it's going to decrease your initial velocity which is here but it's not going to alter your equilibrium concentration so your equilibrium concentration will remain constant and the another rule, if you are going to deal with uncompetitive inhibitor, which is uh, this this graph, so what what we say here, if you see here, like uh, if you are going to deal with uncompetitive inhibitor, if your mu max value, this value, this mu max value, is decreased by a factor of alpha then you will see that your your equilibrium concentration will be multiplied by that part, same factor alpha you know so if you are how do you say let's change this one if your mu max is decreased by exactly half of if you add a due to this uh, uncompetitive inhibitor so once you added an uncompetitive inhibitor just assume your initial maximum initial velocity decreased exactly how do you call it like become exactly half of the maximum initial velocity of the pure system yeah so then your km value for this one will be exactly twice the substrate concentration so, twice this maybe let me put it back here yes. say uncompetitive inhibitor so this is for pure enzyme mu max and just assume once you added an inhibitor uncompetitive inhibitor your mu max suddenly became half of the mu max value while you are going to the mu max value that you obtained when you are with just a pure enzyme yeah well this is very difficult to, <laughs> to explain yeah? mu max by two and if you know this km value you know how to calculate this pure value for a pure system so mu max by half two it will be somewhere around here so this will be your km value which is nothing but your substrate concentration at which your mu reaches mu max by 2 yeah. so when mu equal to mu max by 2 and if you apply the same rule here so exactly half of this value if you come down and if you calculate this km value that km value will be exactly equal to 2 multiplied by your substrate concentration so if i 
if I said you have an uncompetitive inhibitor and if I give the, the mu max value and if I give you the mu max value for a pure pure system a mu max value of an impure system and I give some clue like you have an uncompetitive inhibitor you must be able to calculate this km value in presence of an inhibitor it's very easy yeah? so you take a mu max of pure system mu max of impure system say mu max of pure and then mu max of impure you divide that one these two values that will give you some factor say that's equal to the factor of alpha and if you know if you know the km value for pure enzyme then the km value in presence of an uncompet uncompetitive inhibitor will be exactly equal to alpha times s so pure enzyme is equal to some substrate concentration if you want you can put s1 so that will be equal for impure system it will be equal to alpha multiplied by s1 so that's how you have to deal when you have an uncompetitive inhibitor yeah? i hope you all can follow these calculations because these are if at the end of the day the equation looks like y is equal to mx plus c but the way you interpret that that that, that part is really difficult yeah first you, you should know how to how to plot your data in the line weaver bar plot or if you want you can call it as a double reciprocal plot so you take the reciprocal of one by your initial velocity and reciprocal of your substrate concentration and then you plot them one by your initial velocity in y-axis one by substrate concentration in the x-axis draw the trend line from that you can from the trend line you can calculate the slope intercept and also the you can also extrapolate the trend line in order to to get the point at which the trend line cuts your x-axis from that from that particular point you can calculate your equilibrium concentration km value so 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 these are some basic rules yeah so and also depending on maybe i will plot one one more graph that will allow you to to understand your bit So this is for your pure system say this is for your pure enzyme so no inhibitors yeah? and then you have your second inhibitor let's i'm going to call this as inhibitor one i'm going to call this as inhibitor one and then i'm going to do I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to call this as inhibitor two. And then how to put this non competitive inhibitor? Let me change another color. So let's put another one.
so this one is inhibitor 3 so this is your line weaver berg plot so just from the graph we can easily identify so this is a pure system how to know pure system if, if you see this this line this will be at the bottom yeah so everything above this will be something impure system yeah so, so all the line that you see the line which goes in the bottom so this is your one by mu value so if this value is low which means this should be the one with the maximum initial velocity yeah so anything which is above which means your initial velocity is decreasing so this should be due to some inhibition effect so this is your pure system and this is your inhibitor one that's your inhibitor two and that's your inhibitor three so these graphs so if you look at this pure system you have some intercept and if you look at this inhibitor two it cuts it cuts at the same intercept so what it means inhibitor 2 and your pure system have common intercept which means mu max is the same so this means competitive inhibitor yeah? for inhibitor to you yeah. which means competitive inhibitor so inhibitor 2 is a competitive inhibitor and again go back to this graph here let me change some color color hmm, I take this one say inhibitor 3 here if you see it comes and then it cuts at the same point in the x-axis where your pure system the trend line of your pure system and your inhibitor 3 they cuts at this they meet at the same point in the x-axis so it means the equilibrium concentration is same so inhibitor 3 and your pure system same equilibrium concentration which is your km value but different intercept you see here your intercept is here for inhibitor 3 and your intercept is here for your pure system so which means different mu max so what does that mean this means we're dealing with non-competitive inhibitor so this is a non-competitive inhibitor yeah and then if you go back to the same graph if you look at this pure system and look at this inhibitor 2 this time inhibitor 2 now we already saw that one sorry this time inhibitor 1 if you see that one you see a different intercept when you compare with pure system and also have a different km value so a different equilibrium concentration so inhibitor one and pure system so they have different km which means different equilibrium concentration values and different mu max because you have different intercept 
so this means inhibitor inhibitor one is a what type of inhibitor it is that it's a uncompetitive inhibitor eh? yes so so i think i'm going to stop here though i think i already explained everything about enzyme inhibition kinetics required for this module yeah? in fact there are it's, you, you can you can la learn a lot in fact this is a very huge topic you know but for this module this basic knowledge is more than enough so what you learn from this module is like uh, relevant to this particular topic enzyme inhibition kinetics is uh, you learn inhibitors are some molecules like enzymes and they they have definite structure like enzymes and it can go and lock lock the some of the space available in the enzyme something like your fisher's lock and key hypothesis which we read in the previous lectures so 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 the job of inhibitor is to minimize the action of the enzyme so enzymes can convert your substrate into products very fast but your your inhibitors can can inhibit this particular action of the enzyme which is the ability of the enzyme to convert your substrate into product so that's the job of the inhibitors and inhibitors can go and lock into the space of the enzyme or it can go and lock into the space of the enzyme substrate complex or it can go and lock into the space of the enzyme inhibitor complex yeah so so sorry your substrate can go and lock into the space of the enzyme inhibitor complex so all of these mechanisms ultimately is going to decrease the rate of the reaction so and and we needed um, and and we already showed sorry we already read some some equations that allows you to relate relate how your initial velocity is going to change as a function of substrate concentration in presence of different type of inhibitors and how to identify the different type of inhibitors for that you need to know the knowledge or the how to or how to call how to plot this line weaver bird plot yeah? i i just assumed you all know how to if you have a mu and substrate concentration i, I just assume you all know how to take the reciprocal of both of these parameters and how to plot on a graph sheet because i believe you must have learned this in the any mathematics course probably in your first year so so how to coming back to this problem how to identify the different type of inhibitor you must have some some basic knowledge about uh, the michaelis menten kinetics uh, and and the reciprocal of this michaelis menten expression and then and then you know how to make this double reciprocal plot or if you want you can call it as a line weaver bird plot and you should know how to calculate your slope and intercept and you should, and you can visually in, interpret the the results like uh, just now i showed you like this graph so you can visually interpret like so if you see which inhibitor have a different uh, intercept different slope which inhibitor have a common intercept which inhibitor have a common intersection point at the x axis so this one so from that you can you can identify okay i have a different intercept but a common slope so my inhibitor is this particular type so you have to you should know how to how to make this line weaver bird plot and then you should you should apply the theoretical knowledge that you gained in this particular lecture and then you have to give the answer okay this is my this is the type of inhibitor that i'm going to deal with so so i think this is enough for this topic let me check one more time and there are a few other things you should remember especially this uncompetitive inhibitor you know, this graph i showed you if your mu max is if it's decreased by some factor of alpha your km value for this one in presence of your, your inhibitor will be exactly equal to alpha multiplied by the substrate concentration 
So this is the concentration at which your mu value reached half of the mu max in absence of inhibitor. Yeah? So, so try to try to understand uh, these theoretical concepts. In the exam, you might expect few few questions from enzyme kinetics, enzyme inhibition kinetics. So try to pay attention. Yeah? So it's a uh, it's very easy to remember this expression, but what's more important is uh, you have to gain the theoretical understanding. Yeah? So, if, even if somebody gave you some experimental data, like initial velocity or different substrate concentration, you should know, okay, I, I know how to plot a line weaver berg plot, and then from that, I can even know which one is pure and which one must be something happening in presence of an inhibitor and I, I can even identify what type of inhibitor it is and if I know what type of inhibitor obviously I can calculate its maximum initial velocity and I can also calculate the equilibrium concentration so that's that's the engineering skill you record so I'm going to stop recording this lecture I will upload this in the YouTube immediately so so after this what else is I need to cover in this module. Let me check my notes. So next lecture, I'm going to cover uh, enzyme immobilization techniques. So this is completely theory. There is no mathematics involved. So let, me, so let me write it here. Enzyme immobilization techniques. So I'm going to give you some general overview about enzyme immobilization technique in the next lecture and then I will upload a word document. So you have to read that word document and then just listen to this quick overview about this immobilization techniques. And I think Jack solved a few problems in mass balance in the tutorial. So I will try to solve two, two or three more problems related to, to mass balance and then so so the idea behind mass balance is like um, I will just show how to perform a mass balance and in the exam I might ask something completely different uh, from what I'm going to teach you in during the tutorial time so I will post one tutorial video related to mass balance and then another lecture video about enzyme immobilization techniques so and then sorry Then I will quickly show the, the bioreactor, the mode of operation, which is batch continuous and, and fed batch reactor. I so I will cover both enzyme immobilization and bioreactor operation, both in the in the same video. And then I will give a general overview about the importance of mass transfer. Importance of mass transfer. I will upload this in the PowerPoint, not in the YouTube. So I will record something directly on the PowerPoint and then I will upload it. So you, I think your class reps mentioned that they, some of you want to know the details behind the, mass, the role of mass transfer and also the different mode to, or how do you call it, the, the different operational mode. Like a badge. continuous and semi-batch anyway I will cover this in the next lecture and then what else is missing and then we have something related to downstream processing or downstream unit operations so what this part will cover is like imagine you you perform some microbial reaction it can be with a live cell or even with an enzyme so you have some product and then th these products are not going to be 100% pure yeah 100% pure so you need to go through some 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 other unit operations like a filtration drying if you want your product in the dried format then you need to dry your sample it 
can be you can dry the sample directly in that oven or you need to go some specialized technique like a lyophilization or or we can call it as a freeze drying and sometimes if your if your particles are so the density of your particles are so so low then you need to go for other type of techniques instead of filtration you need to go for uh, centrifugation and and so on so these are the things we will cover in downstream processing so downstream processing is I'm, uh, again i'm going to give only a general overview you know like you, you don't have to go through in detail because you are going to to design each of those unit operations like filtration drying sedimentation adsorption and column chromatography in in the module CG4017. So for this module, I'm going to just give what are the operations that we normally perform. And so like, like you should know like when to go for a filtration unit or when to go for a centrifugation or when to go for a freeze drying or when to go for a normal drying in an oven. You know? So these type of things I'm going to cover for this particular module. Yeah? So, so this downstream processing, enzyme immobilization techniques, bioreactor operation, they all are pure theory, no mathematics, no derivations involved. And importance of mass transfer, you will have two or three expressions that you must know before leaving this module. And, and after that, I will close this module. Yeah? So thanks for listening. And if you ha sorry, I forgot to mention, if you have any doubts, please write an email or you can even call me directly in the MS Teams. A few of you call me in the MS Teams. Normally, I answer any time, even if it's weekend or weekdays or after working time, after five or any time. If you call me, if I don't have any other meeting, I, I, I normally pick the call. And if you have any doubts, I will try to answer, answer you. If you want, I can even solve the problem in... in in teams if you if you don't understand a particular step or if you don't understand why you get some expression or what's the theoretical background of that expression you can obviously ask me yeah? so so please do that